director of the Jackson College Winter Film Series and English Composition and Film Studies instructor at JC, Michael Mara. Hi, Mike. How you doing, Bart? I'm good. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, yeah. I want to compliment you on the selection of movies uh, so far. I've been to a couple of them. And um, the one I saw two weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, what was it called? Kiss Me Deadly. Kiss Me Deadly. I had never heard of it. And it was really hard to find out any information about it. Sure. But it seems to me you really ch uh, chose that movie for several specific things in that movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, film styles. Sure. Right? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I, uh, I picked it for, for two main reasons, right? <clears throat> First of all, it's, a, it's an excellent example of film noir, right? Which, yep. is a, which is a genre that we're all familiar with, with hard-boiled detectives and femme fatales and that sort of thing. We've seen that, you know, run through, you know, modern cinema, right? We've seen these themes, these archetypes running through modern cinema. And so it's good to see where this all started back in the 40s and 50s, right? The other reason that I chose it is because in the 1950s, there was this, this real fear of atomic horror, right? The, this real threat, right? You know, the, the Cold War was in full swing, right? Um, you know, we had students doing, uh, you know, uh, duck and cover uh, drills Oh, yeah, in school, we, we right? had to hide our hands over the desk. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, spoiler alert, I guess, because uh, this doesn't show up in the picture until late in the movie, right? But the, uh, the MacGuffin, the, the, uh, the plot device that's been driving the entire film, turns out to be this, this box full of not really described, but more or less radioactive nuclear atomic material, right? And uh, everyone's terrified of it. And at the end of the movie, again, spoiler alert, sorry, everybody, um, everyone dies because yeah. they, they, couldn't, uh, they couldn't keep their hands off this thing. Everyone thought it was jewels or riches or money, but it was actually, you know, this terrifying atomic device. And so, and so that's a good way to illustrate both the genre of film noir and... Um, this feeling that everyone had, uh, and not just in the United States, but around the world, right, during that time period. So that's, that's why I chose it for the most part. And, I mean, it's a heck of a good time, right? Who doesn't want to watch a hard-boiled P.I. punch guys in the face, right? Yeah, and that um, P.I., uh, he's been portrayed on film uh, since, and on television as well, it was... Uh, Mike Hammer. Mike Hammer, but the Mike Hammer that's in that movie, he's a jerk. He, I mean, he's right, not a nice guy. Right. There's no, no one in the movie is a nice guy. I asked uh, my students afterwards. I, uh, I don't remember if you stuck around or not. But after the picture, I, uh, I asked my students, uh, was, was anyone likable in this movie? <laughs> right? And um, the answer is no. no. Right? We, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't treat anyone very nicely. He uh, definitely doesn't treat the female characters very nicely. And, uh, yeah, the, no one's very likable in, in the movie. So... Yeah. All right, so you missed the movie. There's no way you're ever going to see it because I'm sure it's not available <laughs> anywhere. But the next week's movie, I think more people will be familiar with, it's a horror flick. It's a horror picture. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> February. Um, February is not typically a horror picture month. I mean, it's cold, right? It's yeah. dark, right? So, uh, but yeah, we're, um, we're watching uh, one of my absolute favorites, um, John Carpenter's Halloween, mm -hmm. 19, 1978. Um, so yeah, what do you think about that? Well, let's take a look. We have a clip. <laughs> wow. Yes. A clip of Halloween. Halloween night. A small American town. 15 years ago. Michael? Halloween. I spent eight years trying to reach him, and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. Mm. We'll talk about Halloween, <laughs> the movie. Uh, when, we take, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break. Mike Myers with us from Jackson College, and we'll... Uh, Take a look at Halloween after this.
Jackson Coffee Company. Roast it fresh in store so you can brew it at home. Kibby Cobb Deli, open seven days a week, offers a wide variety of signature sandwiches, soups, flatbread pizza, gourmet hot dogs on homemade hot dog buns, bagel sandwiches, deli meats, sides, and much more. Check us out on Facebook for the complete menu. And just a couple storefronts down is the Iron Bark Brewing Company. This is a popular spot for terrific craft beers, the same amazing food as offered at Kibby Cobb Deli, live music, and great people. Kibby Cobb Deli and Iron Bark Brewing Company, both located on Kibby Road in Jackson. Are you feeling lucky in 2023? With the American One Credit Union Lucky 10 promotion, now through May 31st, we are drawing two winners per month to each win three loan payments. That's 10 winners total. You can earn an entry with a new or used auto loan or a refinance from another financial institution. For full details and to apply today, visit any branch location or AmericanOneCU.org. Federally insured by the NCUA. Oven Fresh. Those two words say it all. There's just one place to go for those fresh baked goods that really take you back. The ABC Bakery does it all. Cakes, cookies, cupcakes, candy, pies, and even special orders. Stop in, give us a call, or order online. The ABC Bakery for all your favorite seasonal and holiday goodies. The ABC Bakery. Baked goods just like mom and grandma used to make. Make your winter a winner at Firekeepers with the Cadillac Cruising Giveaway on Saturday, February 25th. You could win one of five luxurious 2023 Cadillacs in one day, including the grand prize, a gorgeous new XT6 SUV. Earn entries daily through February 25th for the Cadillac Cruising Giveaway. The best giveaways, the biggest guaranteed prizes, only at Firekeepers Casino Hotel. On Thursday, At Home Jackson comes up next. A lot of DIY ideas, some shopping suggestions, and more with Amy Potts today on JTV. Mike Mara is with us from Jackson College, film professor and English composition uh, professor. And he is the guy that's running the Jackson College Winter Film Series. So Halloween, yeah, I agree, that's a classic. and. For the horror genre, what else? That'd be perfect. I mean, it, it really, it really set the stage for all of all of modern horror, right? Um, if, if we're drawing a line in the sand between old schlocky horror and modern, more visceral, you know, horror, um, we really draw the line with 1960 and Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Right, which was kind of the blueprint for the slasher genre, but we didn't get any further than that until John Carpenter showed up in, in the late 70s, and he really set the template for uh, what horror movies were going to be until basically through most of the 90s. Yeah, Carrie, that's one that sticks with me too. For sure. All right, so we've got a, a whole series we're just into, just barely underway. We've got three or four uh, what's what's coming up? What's next? Um, after Halloween, uh, next uh, the Monday after that, we'll be watching RoboCop, okay. 1987's <laughs> RoboCop. And that you you chose that for? I chose that for a number of reasons, Bart. Uh, number one, I love this movie <laughs> so much. Um, two, um, a lot of people. Uh, dismiss RoboCop or throw it away because oh, it's just another action picture. Oh, it's just really violent. Um, but it's more than that, right? It's this really, really excellent satire of um, the overconsumption of the 80s, um, you know, excess uh, that, that we were all going through during that. Well, <laughs> not myself, obviously, <laughs> but, uh, you know, going through that time. And, and, and again, just like uh, Halloween, which is a horror picture, right? Just like uh, RoboCop, which is a picture with a lot of overwhelming violence or anything with a monster in it, Godzilla, zombie movies, right? All of these good genre pictures aren't about the monster. It's not about the monster. It's always about the human characters, how they're reacting to the situation, and it's always going to be some kind of commentary or satire about uh, the times 
in which the film was made, right? And RoboCop is this beautiful satire of what was going on in the 1980s. It's also incredibly, incredibly violent. And I have second guessed uh, whether or not I should have shown it, but now it's too late. So uh, we'll see how the uh, students react. And I think it's one of those me movies you look at and you, you think, oh my gosh, they, they wouldn't make this movie today. Right. I mean, there's for so many reasons. Sure. So the Academy Awards, uh, have been announced the nominations. Ten movies. Sure. Uh, all could be best picture. Have you seen any of the nominees? I've seen a handful of them. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've seen them, obviously. Uh, uh, I, I didn't even know this was going to happen, but we are watching uh, Everything uh, Everywhere All at Once yeah. at the end of this film series. And that's, uh, I think that's number one in nominations. <laughs> if not number one, pretty close. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, the best actress, best supporting actress, best picture, etc. Um, so that's exciting. So yeah. you know, come down, come downtown and see an Academy Award nominee. Um, I also saw, um, I saw the uh, the Top Gun sequel, Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. I saw that picture. Um, I'm blanking on the rest of the uh, the list. You got a list right there? No, I don't. No. But uh, Elvis and Top Gun, those are the two I, I saw. Sure. I, think I might have seen one or two others, sure. but um, I thought Elvis was. Uh, unbelievable. I thought it was very well made and the Austin Butler was fantastic. Right. As I, I, I missed Elvis, but uh, I am a big fan of the director, uh, Baz Luhrmann, right, ah, who's this right. Australian guy who um, he's only directed, if you, look at his, if you look at his filmography, only five or six pictures, but they're all these big, lavish productions. Um, I really, really like um, his adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. With Leonardo DiCaprio okay, and Claire uh, Danes. That's well, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, okay. it's, it's an excellent picture. And I think he takes forever to make a movie. He does. They, they're in production for five, or six, seven right. years. Right. Yeah, because they're these huge productions, right? Same thing with The Great Gatsby, also with Leonardo ah, DiCaprio, right? Wow, nice. So the um, class has 20, 30 students in it, mm -hmm. but uh, the general public are they allowed to hang out after the movie and? participate or listen to the discussion? 100%, oh, wow. right? Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the general public is not allowed in the doors until after the movie. Yeah. But after the movie uh, ends, until right? Until after the movie starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until yeah, yeah. before the movie starts. <laughs> before the movie starts, right? <laughs> um, but after the movie, um, everyone is welcome to stick around and, and participate in the discussion. Um, I've had a handful of uh, people from the, uh, from the public hang around and they've raised their hands and they're, they're, they're contributing to the discussion. And, and it's going to be fun, um, especially this week. We're gonna we're gonna go deep into Halloween and what it's really saying about a lot of things. We're gonna be talking about some film theory. We're gonna be talking about feminism. We're gonna be talking about the male gaze. Right now, I'm getting into the weeds, but it's gonna be pretty yeah. exciting stuff. And everyone's invited, so you should stick around. Awesome. All right, Halloween Monday, seven fifteen at the Michigan Theater, and it's uh, it's a bargain. It's only five bucks. Amazing. <laughs> Can't the, beat it. The popcorn's a deal too. Sure is. Well, great to have you here, Mike. Thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for having me again. Uh, from Jackson College, English Composition and Film Studies instructor, Mike Mara. Mike's also the director of the Jackson College Winter Film Series. Well, that's it. We've run out of time. Thanks to Mike. And